Hi, I'd like to talk about consumerism, feminism, and male disposability, and how they're all related to each other. <clears throat> now, admittedly, some of this is speculation, but I think if uh, you connect the dots, and I do think there are enough dots to connect, you could well likely arrive at similar conclusions um, as I have. Now, uh, let's get a rough idea of what consumerism is. It's uh, excessive and frequent spending of money, often unnecessarily for things uh, people don't need, uh, often accompanied by uh, a very, very quick throwing away of those things. Uh, if said item or product is uh, not uh, as quite as functional as it used to be, or indeed uh, simply perceived not to be as functional as it used to be. The latter you often see manifested uh, manifest itself when some someone sees a, a product that another product that appears better or seems to do things better, it's quicker, faster, prettier, or what have you. Then even if the old product is still functional and perfectly good, it'll be jettisoned and you know, person buys the new thing. That's basically what consumerism is in a nutshell. Just uh, buying stuff. It's the quick fix. Uh, I want to say at the outset that consumerism as such has nothing to do with capitalism. It, it, it occurs within a capitalistic framework. And this is just to, you know, ward off all these people who claim I'm a socialist, which is ludicrous, but, but uh, it has nothing to do with that, um, th this sort of mentality. Uh, capitalism is uh, competition in the sense of people trying to offer better goods and services um, to consumers. Uh, that, that has nothing to do with the quick fix, uh, buy, buy your thing, throw it away uh, mentality of consumerism. Um, because capitalism, in, in a sense, as far as trader and barred, a barter system, has been around for thousands of years, whereas consumerism in its current form has really only been around for a couple of decades, and I'll get to that later. Um, but getting back to the point, before I digress to the point where my thoughts just totally fly off into the air. <laughs> uh, so that's basically what consumerism is. It's the quick fix. Um, people these days just spend money on junk they don't need, and even if they do need it, they get rid of it right away. The other issue, of course, that goes hand in hand with consumerism, in my opinion, is uh, what I would call product half-life time. So when I talk about product half-life time, I'm talking about uh, how things, how long things last and their functionality. So anecdotally, uh, I'll mention my father's old army duffel bag. I, I, I believe it was manufactured in the late 50s. Um, that thing, I, I used it up until the early 2000s. It was still going strong 50 years on. Yeah, it had a couple of dents, some scratches, maybe a small tear or two. But it was perfectly fine, and I used it as a carrying bag, and it was really good. Uh, I tried to get, go to you know, a sporting outlet or a shop and, <laughs> and get a carrying bag of that caliber these days. You're lucky if, it'll have, if it has a half-life time of two to three years. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the two to three years seems almost like a magic number. Yes, there is some individual variance, uh, variation depending on the product, but a lot of products only seem to last two or three years, and then you chuck it and you buy the next thing. And uh, one has to ask, the, pose the question as to why or how this all came to be, because that wasn't always the way it was. Um, sometimes, or at least in the past, it seemed that often products and the things you bought were a, almost a long-term investment if it was expensive, like a car. A car used to be a long-term investment. You know, you, sp you saved up your money, it was expensive, you bought it, but then it would last 20, maybe even 25 years. Uh, can't speak of cars these days in the same fashion. Um, and you certainly can't speak of appliances and, and things of that nature in the same fashion. So consumerism uh, really, it, part of consumerism is um, a kind of, what I would call disposable manufacturing. Uh, basically, you make, you make things, 
and you don't make them to last, you make them to satisfy the whims and the quick fix of the customer and until the customer buys something new or better, or what's perceived to be better. That's basically what consumerism is. But I'm not just talking about consumerism here, because I think women uh, play a very large role in all of this. So for example, we know, we know, by dint of facts, that women have more disposable income than men do. It's just simply the way it is. Uh, they, in fact, even female bloggers and feminists will claim that women have 80% of disposable household income and 60 to 70% of world disposable income and so on and so forth. Never mind the source often of that disposable income, we'll ignore that part. So it's quite uh, obvious that um, women have a major economic influence because they have a lot of money to spend. I'm not saying they're earning all that money, uh, per se, but they do have a lot of money to spend. And so it's fairly logical to assume that the economy has constructed itself and tailored itself to female needs because females, quite frankly, spend more money than men do. Men also tend to save a lot more. Uh, women are less inclined to save. So the e world economic structures, particularly in the West, will certainly gear themselves towards uh, female spending, i.e. consumer mentality. But before I go further into con consumer spending mentality, I'd like to say that consumerism really has only been around for a couple of de decades, and to the observant person, uh, you could probably link it up very easily with the rise of uh, politicized feminism. Politicized feminism, uh, as I constantly stress, as opposed to inherent feminism and inherent female nature, which arose a couple of decades ago and has been on the, uh, the, uh, the march ever since and you know, getting, becoming ever stronger. Uh, we also see a rise of consumerism. That is to say, the more politicized feminist in structures have come into being, in, in our governments and in society at large, uh, the more this is manifested in the economy, bolstered, of course, by inherent female nature, by inherent fe feminism. And so we see the entire economic structure very much geared and tailored towards female needs. What are female needs? Well, women, a lot of this is, due with, is to do with evolutionary psychology in a way, or evolutionary patterns. Men are, were hunters and women were foragers, well, allegedly. So I know for as for myself, when I want something or need something, I'll go out and I'll buy it, or I won't. And if they don't have it, I won't buy it. It's very specific. Um, women tend to be more window shoppers. They like to browse and so on and so forth. Um, they also tend to spend exorbitant amounts of cash on on items that men prefer to to men which have no utility whatsoever um, and, and really recycle through them. And a perfect example is clothing and shoes. You know, it's a running joke. How many pairs of shoes does women need? Well, who knows? I don't think it's that funny to begin with. But as well as clothing, uh, you have clothing for different seasons and what have you. You know, Barbara Russell a while back made a very important video wherein he mentioned the nature of fashion. Fashion is a joke. Fashion is something that is perhaps inherent to females, but men recognize that fashion is, uh, well, fashion is just uh, nonsense. At the end of the day, clothing is there to clothe you, keep you warm, protected, what have you. So the idea of seasonal clothing and clothing for special occasions and shoes and so on, uh, women constantly buy, uh, buy these things. They, uh, they go on a shopping fix, allegedly to uh, go shopping spree, allegedly to fix their, depre their, their, their temporary bouts of discontentment or, uh, or depression. So um, we see a, a very clear pattern here. Women spend lots of money on, on things that are not very useful. Um, they, re they recycle it, so they're always buying new things. And this, to me, 
given the, the levels uh, of consumerism that we see manifested in society today, is also a manifestation of both the, the strength of politicized feminism and inherent fem feminism, and how, how much it's really influenced everything. You see, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I believe to be happening here is basically uh, female feministic structures uh, really molding the way the economy is shaping. And so even what you might want to call feministic manufacturing principles, so whereas 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago things might have been built to last because people needed them to last, if the major consumer buying things is someone who buys things on a whim uh, for very specific purposes and then jettison said article uh, you know after a couple of months and most of the people most of the people who are doing this are female and most of, and females have more disposable income it goes to show that it's quite likely that the manufacturing base as a whole whatever the product might be might start operating along those lines as well um, you, know, you buy it and you chuck it. Women, unfortunately, also have the advantage that, that men are willing to spend money for them. Uh, I think there are fewer, well, there's no, be there's no better place to see how much the economy at large is tailored to female needs when you look at the shaming ads with regards to, say, Valentine's Day jewelry or anniversaries, also jewelry, all in an effort to shame men into uh, buying gaudy chunks of rock uh, for their women. And, you know, allegedly that they're not real men and they don't care about their women and what have you if they don't do it. It's constant. In fact, I did a while, while back, I translated a German article just about that. Um, equating how much men love their women, or, or who are the cheapest men with regards to Valentine's and so on and so forth. Um, I'm fairly certain that the economy itself, if you, I, I don't like to refer to it as an entity, but it certainly doesn't care about um, which direction um, the pendulum is going to swing. And so if women have politicized feminism uh, and inherent feminism is running amok in society, and they have most of the money, it goes without saying that the economy itself will structure, restructure itself uh, to tailor uh, to their needs, to be tailored to their needs, and to uh, disregard, uh, at the very least, disregard male needs. But there's a further point. Um, women operate, we, we become very familiar with the term male disposability. Women operates along the lines of male disposability with their products and vice versa. Men are simply products to women and the quick fix, the exchange, uh, uh, and then the later, the, the jettison that takes place later is uh, something that's common to both w women who are buying actual products and women who are buying uh, men as it were. They're, they're investing their so-called time in men. And so we see this routinely. Um, we see this, for example, in, in Birfo's Law. Um, the minute you see something that you perceive to be better as a female, you go for it and you get rid of the old, uh, so quote unquote, useless thing. Um, that's why you, you it's, it's, it's almost a, a symbiotic relationship. Female shopping mentality, where things are bought and thrown away and the next best, the next, the soon as the next best thing is uh, seen and cited, then, uh, well, then you got to buy it. Um, and oftentimes, it's simply it's the perception that these things are better than uh, than the things that they've had previously. So what we see really is the the play, the interplay between uh, consumerism mentality, which really does seem to be somewhat inherent to female nature feminism and and the men uh, that females have relationships with remember that females initiate anywhere from 70 to 80 percent of no-fault divorces 
They initiate the vast majority of breakups in relationships. Um, and so, yeah, women, but also this, this also stresses the point that men tend to be savers, long-time planners, and women are more spur-of-the-moment creatures. You know, men tend to save up for long-term projects, work in the hopes that at one point in time it will pay off. Women d tend not to think that far in the future, hence the shopping sprees and just buying things. But also, as manifested in um, so-called partnerships, where the man is willing to pull his weight and do a lot of work, quote-unquote, work to please the female, he's willing to make accommodations, he's willing to invest the time and energy. Whereas with a female, in the vast majority of cases, the slightest sense of dissatisfaction, she tends to either just end it or create problems. So we see this manifestation. Men tend to be savers, um, and women uh, less so. Now, this might be a bit of a stretch, but I think on the whole, people tend to save a lot less than they used to. And since more women have more, women have more money than men, uh, it's really women who are doing the saving uh, as opposed to men, um, which says a whole lot. Uh, we as a society, now some of that, yes, has to do with an currency inflation and lack of value of said currency, but... A lot of it just has to do with people's attitudes, specifically women's attitudes. So we definitely see this. Women do shop much more frequently, and they get rid of things uh, much more frequently than men do. And I think we see this manifestation in the, in the so-called relationship between men and women as well. So what I'm positing here is the idea uh, that Consumerism in its current form, um, the buy and chuck mentality, and things just not lasting a very long time, simply because these things are some, uh, an overt manifestation and reflection of, what we have, of a feminized culture, but feminized by both politicized feminism, with a capital F, and then lowercase f feminism as it is inherent to female nature. Consumerism is a reflection of that mentality. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching.